Hi, my name's Flossie, and this is my tiny house on wheels, Siren the Step Fan. I'm on my way to take care of my mental health and go for a dive. I also leave on a very big trip this weekend and provision the van for like four weeks. I have started my journey, I'm done and can just head north. It is very exciting, I am a little nervous. I... To make into like an elderflower wine. The road trip has officially begun. Spring is finally here, and I can feel the heaviness of winter, the darkness. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, we've left behind the long, dark, mysterious daytime, as we called it, in order to try fool ourselves into feeling awake and energetic when it gets dark at 4pm. I go down to the marina for an afternoon lift to my spirits and let the sounds of the waves and wind blow the cobwebs from my brains. Otters, river otters, not sea otters, confusingly known since they are also ocean dwellers, though also comfortable on land, decorating the dock with stinky piles of crushed shells and wet stains from rubbing their cute slinky cat ferret bodies around with glee. They're such adorable, but slightly aggressive little creatures. Things are smelling wet and alive now. The air is filling with flower blossom scents and the new green things growing and bursting their heads above ground slowly. Yet, I will be leaving soon. I'm really grateful to have the friends that I do, to know folks in community and see a familiar face here and there as I get out and about, depending on where I am. If you don't already know, Go follow Boho Blue Van on YouTube. They make gorgeous little videos and I'm excited to follow her travels this year as we both will be leaving soon. Spring is here. <sighs> Cheers. I'm down at the beach just relaxing because I've had the craziest week or two and it's been a whole lot of hard feelings with a horse passing away and dealing with my layoff at work grief and joy and beauty and look where we are it's gorgeous the sun is just setting now and I feel so grateful to be where I am. My little house. Hmm. Oh, oh. I love living outside of cities. All right, time for a little run, a little exercise and some walks. Okay, let's go. The opposite to what I did when I was younger. Now, connecting more with nature. The feeling of being alive lost deep in the forests. Helping out with farm work. Animal and livestock care. When I can and where I am, whenever I'm around. run a 
as fast as you. I really, I can't. I can't run as fast as you. Come on. Nothing like, oh yeah, nothing like going for a walk. To get one awake and lift one's mental health and spirits. Hey buddy. I'm just starting to learn a little bit more about horses and they're such majestic beasts. Why they listen to us and learn commands, I don't quite know. <laughs> When they're so much bigger, faster, and heavier, it sparks me with wonder and respect. Hi, cutie. For the relationships we build with these maj majestic creatures. However, the time must come when I leave even them behind and move on. Oh, so beautiful out here. Hey buddy, it's nice to get outside, go for a bit of a walk, have some exercise. Oh. Time to head back. Maybe I'll come back here with a saw another time and cut that tree down. It's fallen down and blocking the trail. We have a good walk. Oh, so fun. Because I'm leaving soon. Scratchy, scratchy. Good morning, folks. It is a gorgeous spring morning. <sighs> I wish I was as chipper as it looks outside. I had a bit of a bumpy morning having a bit of a cry and basically an overtired stress moment with applying for work and contracting at the moment and trying to figure out what I'm doing with my income situation. I also leave on a very big trip this weekend. So I've been doing prep, filling up my tanks of water and propane and gas. I've got to finish doing all of that and making sure I have food and fuel. And just feeling a little overwhelmed with like the number of things that I have to remember. And so I'm on my way to take care of my mental health and go for a dive. I have been doing a bunch of diving more recently and it has been so good for my brain and my body to move in a nice, beautiful, low impact exercise. Snorkeling's the same. I just really need it. I know how many of you have been enjoying coming with me as I freedive. Using this time as my mental reset. To quieten my brain chatter. Slow it down. And if you can, practice holding your breath too, with me, as I go and explore this underwater magical universe. Freediving is my most favourite form of exercise. Like swimming, it is low impact and low stress on the body. 
yet requires calm, patience, and attuneness to knowing my limits and capacity. That snaps me back into myself, being present. Knowing how much energy I've got, and being aware of who, what is around me, and where I am. In order to keep myself safe is very critical. Especially if I am swimming sometimes on my own. Staying well within my limits, but falling more deeply in love with the beauty of my surroundings. A citizen scientist. Aspiring marine biologist nerd. Learning as much as I can every time I don my wetsuit. and become that selky seal of lore and tales yonder past. I have started my journey basically for this last week I have been doing too much getting ready to leave I've only had time to put everything in the van and not really like put it away <sighs> so I have two and a half days now to get to the top of Vancouver Island before I go on my ferry to go to Prince Rupert and I will spend those periods of time tidying up and organizing and getting sorted and putting everything away, seeing if I've missed or left anything behind. <laughs> but right now, you can probably tell that I am in the village and I'm about to go to the post office because a few of you have ordered things from my website and stickers for my Patreon. So I'm about to go and post all of that stuff. There's a school group just walking by. Anyway, I've got to do that and then one or two other errands before I am done and can just head north. It is very exciting. I am a little nervous. I think because I have been in doing mode and focus mode for working and doing other things, I haven't actually let the excitement hit me yet. And I'm beginning my trip and I start catching ferries on Saturday. We're currently ignoring this. We've started. The road trip has officially begun. 
I'll visit beaches wherever I go, curious to see how they differ, and the seasons that change them, their landscapes, typography, geography, that make each one different. It is windy and cold, but this is one of the places where the beach is just massive and right now it's low tide and the ocean is so so far away and I'm over here just getting blown around like crazy <laughs> sometimes like this day they are so windy I find it amazing how a simple gale is enough to wake us up out of a sleepy screen induced stupor and feel every nerve ending, hair follicle, and grain of sand as it's blasted into our faces. Spending time there quietly, watching other folk who are also drawn to these places, the smell of salt in the air, with their dogs, or cats on leashes, leave, where? Hi. Why? <laughs> Yes, me! Oh my god! It's so Hi. nice to meet you! That's my baby, yeah, Oscar. Can I give you a sticker? Yes, of course. <sighs> it still it still feels funny bumping into subscribers who know me when I'm in some random place and I'm just like, ah! Hi! It's so cute and lovely and I really enjoy it. And so if that was you, hi! Spring means new growth and new season of foraging for wild food. Getting seasonal natural minerals and sustenance that just can't be bought at a grocery store. I always feel a deep connection and part of my roots to ancestral history when I feel I have an opportunity into foraging for my next meal on an adventure. Why? Lee? The sign says tidal flats unsuitable for walking. I'm assuming it's very deep mud. But these are bird boxes. everybody from almost halfway from where I started to where I'm going I was gonna sleep here tonight but I'm really tired and I think that it is too close to the road for me and I need to be somewhere a little quieter so I'm gonna go on the hunt this is just a parking uh, rest stop it has bathrooms and I spent the last few hours here I managed to get a bunch of cleaning my van was an absolute mess I just left shoved everything in there and didn't put anything away so now all my food is put away all of the things are mostly organized and put away the only thing I have yet to do is open up the back doors and reorganize my garage and put some of the stuff that's in the van that's supposed to go in the garage back in there. I will get there and get that done, but it was just not possible to do that just yet. So I've been checking the oil regularly as I stop, just making sure, and I've got plenty of supplies of that with me. Tomorrow I need to stop by a hardware store and get some electrical butt connectors um, because I have a little electrical repair that I really want to do before, while I'm up there. I have everything else already. I have all the parts and I want to get some cash because I have a feeling when I'm in Haida Gwaii there might be things that I would like to buy either from local folks or and then just and there's going to be no internet and there's going to be no uh, ATMs or anything like or there probably will be ATMs but 
I don't want to have to go there. I don't want to have to try and use my card. I want to have cash so that I can pay for things, whether it be cafes or stores or local craftsmen and uh, market kind of things. I, must, I have no idea. I've not been there yet. If we come across any of those kind of things, I think it would be smart for me to have cash on me. So I'm going to get that organized in advance. <sighs> I'm on my way now, traveling up island, and the day just isn't long enough for all I want to cram into it. A usual problem I seem to have. I arrive at camp at dark, and it's always an eerie feeling. Driving past, seeing others and knowing others are around, or arriving in a completely empty, being semi-familiar or unfamiliar completely with your surroundings and just having to let it be and trust till morning. Shutting into my cosy space, my home, to rest until adventure begins again in the morrow. I think it's bedtime. This is why I'm leaving. Good morning. It is early morning. I slept pretty good. I was pretty tuckered out by the time I got in here and many hours of driving. But this campsite is gorgeous. And if you can hear, right on the river. There is a river right here. And the faint sounds of it dolloping. What I could hear through the night. <sighs> Along with the occasional wet drip drip drip. I haven't seen pink ones before. Salmon berries. Yeah. Look at them. The flowers are out. And the huckleberries have got new leaves. I arrived here after dark and I really wanted to get one of the campsites that's really close to the river and I couldn't tell where I was going in bits and pieces so I did okay. There's one here that's a little closer but then it would have mean I would have had neighbors and I'm quite happy. I'm just outside a winemaking store and I popped in and got a little packet of champagne yeast and a fresh new airlock. I know I have some of these but I don't trust how long they've been there. And then recently I defrosted a whole bunch of last year's elderflower syrup to make into like an elderflower wine. So I'm going to put this in and I'm going to put a couple of uh, raisins in because I've heard that that helps keep the proteins feeding the yeast. I'm not too sure of the science, but we'll, I don't know, this is for sparkling wines. So let's put that in. We have four 
raisins. Here we go. Great. Glad I got that started. While on the road, brew one's own drinks. <laughs> All right, time to go on to the next errand. Good morning, everybody. I am tired. I just woke up and parked at a trailhead, which has been nice. It's pretty close to the highway, but it was quiet overnight and I didn't get disturbed or anything, which was lovely. Although I did get disturbed in the middle of the night by a mouse in the van. Um, I have a propane line that comes up through the floor to my stove and I think that possibly over winter the steel wool that I had in the hole has either melted or disintegrated or something and it is now possible. Often trailheads, because of messy humans, can mean more rodents. So I haven't had a mouse in my van in months, which has been so lovely. Um, so. Once I'm woken up a bit and had breakfast, I will take the mouse that is inside the van outside and dispose of it. And I will. <sighs> oh got here in the dark so I had no idea what it looked like. Apparently it's very beautiful. I had a mouse this morning and I'm pretty sure that it's my usual spot with a propane line enters underneath the van and while there's nobody else but me in this parking lot I'm gonna go check let me just run my fingers the whole way around no. okay damn it it's not there I don't know. I don't know how he got in. <sighs> I had a mouse last night. 
don't know how it got in. I thought it was down here. <sighs> Seems not. Well, I guess we'll just see. I have plenty of traps. I think this is the fullest that my garage has ever ever been. I've got gas and fuel and kayak and paddleboard and spare batteries and wetsuit gear and generator and heater and peat for my composting toilet and my electrical system. <sighs> Fishing gear, tools. Just reorganized it and everything just fits uh, i'm trying to dry my wetsuit a little bit so that it's not put away in there wet which will be good i need it a little bit drier and then it's like two and a half hours and then i have to head to the ferry terminal so i've got a little bit more tidying up in here to do <sighs> my wetsuit will dry for a little bit longer and then do you ever <gasps> feel like you're on the cusp of something big that something new is about to start. Well, literally and figuratively, I think that's the feeling I have right now. Spring is here, change is happening. I'm feeling more in my body and more in myself. I can't wait to share with you this next chapter. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It means the world to me. I appreciate all of your views, all of your comments. Over this next wee while, I won't be able to reply as much as I have been, but I read every single one. A huge thanks to my Patreons. If you want replies or conversation, head on over there as I try my best to respond to all of those messages. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm really, really excited for next week. Bye.